problem that we're having with the set is that the set is the set was totally dead. Okay, uh, which means no light, no standby light, no indicated light, no, no, no. Of course, no power, nothing. It's just as dead means just as if the TV was unplugged. Okay, that's a dead set. Now, from the era that I came up fixing televisions, that's known as dead. People always, uh, especially back in the comments, they always say, well, the TV's dead, but it has a standby light at the bottom. Uh, that's not really considered a dead set. That's considered a no power set. Okay, the TV is not actually dead. Okay, it's, it's just, you know, the, of course, you may have standby. Okay, which means that that's why the light is on, so it's not dead. It's just like no power or no, or no picture. But uh, anyway, uh, I've got pretty good at fixing these boards up through the years. Um, I'm actually doing this video because of a, uh, a guy I left a comment, uh, which is a good comment, I mean, you know, on one of my uh, videos about, uh, I think it was an LG power supply board that I replaced, and I was just showing the troubleshoot procedures and how to determine whether it was a power supply board or the main board. And he says, you know, and he left a comment saying, well, you know, that's a good video, but next time, show us what was wrong with the power supply board. You know, maybe, you know, maybe, I guess he was pretty much saying, you know, troubleshoot it down the component level. Okay, so, um, basically, if you know how the power supply works, then you'll become, you know, pretty good at troubleshooting it. But so any time that you have a dead set, which means I did not have any standby voltage at all. Okay, you want to just check it. Of course, check your fuse. And the first thing on a dead set with no power, no light, no nothing, is uh, check your fuse. If your fuse is good, then I'll actually go all the way here, to the plug here, and make sure that you do or do not have standby voltage. Okay, if you do not have standby voltage, then of course naturally uh, you have a problem with the power supply board, and you can replace the power supply board. They're, they're fairly, you know, pretty reasonable uh, nowadays. Um, but as you can see, this plug up here, going to the main board. Um, did not have any standby voltage okay and as you can see um, it is labeled this, this fortunately for us because <laughs> some TVs are not uh, this plug is labeled right here and of course this uses 3.3 standby 3.3 volt standby uh, and when, in a lot of cases TVs will use 5 volt standby and it'll be labeled like it'll be, it'll be labeled like you know 3.3 volts standby this one's not it just says 3.3 volts but we know from looking at the other pins here that that is the standby voltage okay which we did not have okay and then some TVs may be labeled you know STB or it may say STB STB which means standby five volts okay and of course this is uh, the first plug here or right here okay um, first plug first pin we did not have that okay so we know we have a bad power supply for naturally and of course I did unplug that plug that white plug that I did unplug it from the main board and rechecked it to make sure that the main board was not drawing any was not drawing the standby voltage down okay and um, but the main thing is just like I said knowing how it works I'm going to give you a brief rundown of how any LED power supply LED television power supply works is that of course you can see we have three transformers okay now obviously this transformer is going to the plug, it's going to the main board. So it's pretty much this circuit here is producing the 12 volts and the, the 13 volts or the 24 volts, uh, whatever the main board, the TCOM board, and whatever else it uses um, can function correctly. Okay, and this, so this is the primary side of the transformer here, and this is the secondary side. And down here, this transformer obviously is going to the LED circuits. Okay, which lights up the actual lights inside of the TV. And if we zoom in on that, on that plug down here at the bottom, we can actually see the plug. And that plug is connected uh, with a wire, of course, <laughs> to the, uh, you, you actually follow that wire and it, it actually go inside of the television. And that's because it's lighting up the LED strips. And those are all the voltages. Okay, and of course, uh, obviously this transformer here in the middle, uh, the little small one there that's probably your standby transfer for the 3.3 volts or the 5 volts or, or whatever okay and another thing you want to notice is that it is separated by a dark uh, by a black line okay and on the right side of that black line which would be to my right here uh, that is the uh, primary side and to the left side of the black line that is the secondary side of the power supply and 
the reason that they have this here is because this is hot ground okay and this side is cold ground okay on this side of the black line everything that you check over here is cold ground so when you are checking voltages make sure that you are grounded in the right spot on the power supply board okay so uh, obviously on the secondary side if you're checking voltages and you want to ground your meter you, you could actually ground it to the chassis anything metal on the chassis or the tuner or on the main board you know anything like that or um or any ground point that's on this any for sure known ground point on the secondary side now if we test anything on here as far as voltage and we want to ground our meter we have to go this is my you know what i usually do to the negative side of one of these filter capacitors okay and uh actually this some may use, just use one big one this actually uses three okay and i don't know if you can see it but the negative side of course is a little band right here so just go to the negative side of either one of these filter capacitors and ground your meter and then you can make any kind of voltage checks on the primary side that you want okay because that is considered hot ground uh you would not get an accurate reading if you go to cold ground and try to check voltages and vice versa and you cannot go to the negative side of the ac input um and you cannot, you know, check check voltages that way because you're going to get a, uh, a false reading. Okay, so I always go to the negative side of one of these filter capacitors. Uh, even if you can't access it, maybe they're standing straight up in the air and you can't access it from the top. Just go to the bottom and just trace the negative side to a component of something that's sticking on top and ground your meter that way. You know, just use your continuity checker and follow the tracing to a component of something that's, that's in that negative ground uh, circuit. Okay, so... Um, what else I want to say? Another thing is that uh, anytime that you have a dead set, a dead power supply board, you are most likely going to have some shorted FETs, point blank. So if you have a dead power supply board, check every FET on there because I'm almost guarantee you that's your problem. If your fuse is good, you're not getting the, the, you're not getting standby voltage uh, on the output side of on the secondary side output stage of your power supply, then start checking the FETs. Okay. Now as you can see, these FETs are actually to make the TV flatter, they actually just folded them over and they're up under these heat sinks here, okay? Now, uh, once again, we have some FETs to drive the transformer to drive the LEDs, okay? Okay, in that circuit. So just say for instance that you have a TV that's coming on, but you're, you're not getting the picture. And you're, um, you know, you're, you got sound with no picture and you figure, okay, well that's the LED circuit, right? Okay, so, and you're gonna check your LEDs using your little checker here right the LED checker and all the LED strips test good then you want to start troubleshooting stuff in this power supply right here okay it's so working way backwards point blank we don't have any standby so we want to focus up we don't have any standby at all which means that nothing's, nothing's gonna work you know of course so um, so we check uh, you know all of our FETs and the stuff on this side and we did of course find a shorted FET right here that is the FET that drives the transformer for the voltages that's going to the main board. Okay, um, right here. Okay, I did change it already. Actually, what happened was um, we had a shorted FET, was FET, and there was actually a resistor next to it, up under the, up, it's actually up under the heat sink, which is also blown. Okay, it was actually a 2.2 ohm one route resistor. Uh, I did replace it with a two watt resistor. I don't know if you can see that or not. A 0.2 ohm two watt resistor. I got it upside down. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. 0.2 ohm two watt resistor. It was a little bigger than the the original one was a 0.2 ohm at uh, one watt. Okay, but um, I just you know, long as the long as the metal, long as the metal is not touching the the, um, the uh, heat sink on top, uh, then, then then you're good. But um, so um, I did replace that FET, okay, and replaced the uh, resistor that was next to it. And um, of course, I actually turned on the power supply. Now, what I actually did was. Um, Of course, I couldn't pull the set, and so um, 
I, I was I was actually trying to fix the power supply board before I ordered a new board. That's the reason that I do pull the boards. Um, as you can see, I did uh, solder a AC cord to here. Now I'm going to uh, give you a, a real good disclaimer here. Be very careful uh, when you are doing this because uh, when you plug this in, if you're not using the isolation transformer, even if you are, maybe you will get shocked if you touch your hand or lean your hand on the wrong spot on this board. Okay. Uh, I've been shocked several times in my career. I've been doing this for 25 years, so I understand that. Uh, I still get shocked every once in a while. So I'm just letting you know, uh, most cases it won't be enough to kill you, but it will actually burn the shit out of your hand or your finger or whatever that you touch. And sometimes I got shocked so bad, I want some years ago, I was actually working on the CRT set, uh, the tube, the picture tube sets, and I was checking the CRT board, making some voltage checks. And I actually went to uh, pull the board off or hold the board or something, and I went across one of the uh, the transistors there, and I got shocked so bad that uh, I actually felt the pain from my right to my left arm, from my hand all the way through my arm, through my shoulders, back to the other hand, the other arm. I had that stiff, kind of tingly pain, like feeling. In my in my in my uh, in my hands and arms for almost a whole week, so that was really weird, right? So of course I was even extra careful after that, but um, so um.